you're going to have a whole bunch of children and like your oldest daughter, she's going to marry the manager at Chick-fil-A and you're going to have free Chick-fil-A for life. Hey, let's go ahead and make sense of a couple of things. Him, Father Mark, Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. I hope to make sense of a couple of things, particularly to look at and respond to the question of like, what can I expect from following the Lord? If I'm following Jesus and I'm trying to be faithful to Him as best as I can in this life, what is it going to look like? Kind of like what's in it for me? And also we're going to tie it in a bit with uh, this Advent season. And the way I want to go about this conversation is by looking at uh, the word blessed, particularly in the context of the Beatitudes, right? Like hashtag blessed. What does that mean? What does it actually mean? Blessed is the English translation of the Greek word makarios, which is the Greek equivalent to the Hebrew word ashray. And this is important because really wrestling with like, wh- like what does this look like? What can I expect? Kind of like what's in it for me as if I follow the Lord and keep the law. It's, it's a really human question and it's been a question from the beginning of salvation history. And it's been a question from the beginning of salvation history with its understanding, its meaning, uh, developing and deepening, right? So if you look back at the, the beginning of, of salvation history with, with the people of Israel, there's this understanding that if we're faithful and we follow the covenant and we follow the law, we're going to get blessed with material blessings like here and now, cows and lands and, and children, etc. This isn't consistent with the reality and God never said that this is what would, would be happening. And so there's people who are righteous who are trying to follow the law who are still suffering. And as we kind of get into the wisdom literature, the people of Israel go into exile. We have sort of the story of of Job, right? It's okay, well, this can't be it. If we follow the Lord, it doesn't mean that here and now very quickly, we're going to experience, if you will, the blessing in material rewards. And it begins to take on this hue of a promise. If we're faithful to the Lord now, there is some future fulfillment. There is some future good. And so the idea kind of looking forward, particularly towards eternal life, Uh, starts to develop but even still even still the people of Israel like they're getting closer to what it means to be blessed what we can expect from following the Lord but right they're still in shadows and then there's the advent of Christ and what Jesus reveals to us particularly in his own life an example and articulated in the Beatitudes is that to be blessed is to be blessed like Jesus the interpretive key for what we can expect is the life death, resurrection, and Jesus, we are going to be blessed like him. And one, one commentator on the Beatitudes refers to the Beatitudes as a self-portrait of Jesus, right? Because he is the blessed one, but he's also the man of the Beatitudes. He is the one who's truly poor in spirit. He is the one who is meek, who is merciful, who is the peacemaker, who is the persecuted one, who is the pure of heart. Jesus is uh, the personification, the fulfillment of the Beatitudes. And so when we're talking about being blessed, it's blessed like Him. So right, so the reference point for what we can expect, like essentially like what's in it for us, those answers are found in looking at the life of Christ Himself. And if we can go kind of one, one level deeper with this, right, the Beatitudes, they, they kind of, they seem to follow this pattern where it's like, okay, there's this, this thing that you don't have, and then there's this promise that you'll have it in the future, but even now in the present, you're already blessed, right? So blessed are the poor in spirit. Like, so there is something that you don't already have here. There's this poverty still. Their kingdom of heaven is there. Like they're, they're, you're going to receive this kingdom, but it, you haven't yet. But already now you're blessed. And the reason for that is like you're blessed in the promise of the Father. The blessing that you already receive here and now is the blessing of the goodness and the promise of the Father because the promise of the Father is so sure, it's already a blessing here and now, although it hasn't yet come to fulfillment. But even deeper, right? Like the promise of the Father is so real and so true and so good. It's actually a divine person. It's in the Gospel of Luke, right? That the Holy Spirit is referred to as the promise of the Father. And so the, the blessing actually is the life of God, the work of the Holy Spirit already present here and now at work in us. So there is this future blessing of this fulfillment of the reception of mercy of the kingdom of heaven being theirs. But here and now you're already blessed because you have been given the divine life to live uh, within you. And this, my friends, is, is good news, right? We're blessed because we have the life of God alive and at work in us. We, we're blessed because we have access to the relationship with the Lord. And the hard part is sometimes we 
don't cherish that enough. And we want this external fulfillment of something. But the Lord is saying like, hey, I give you all that I have. I give you my very self. And I think this, this really speaks well and is really appropriate during Advent, right? This season of expectant hope. And one of our, our favorite hymns, right, during this season is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And it goes, Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel will come to thee, O Israel, right? There's like this, you're blessed now. Rejoice now, already sing now, already have joy now, O Israel, because God is coming and God is with us. There's this looking for what will be, but we're already blessed now because of the promise of the coming of the, of the Lord, Emmanuel, God with us. And my brothers and sisters, like God is with us. And I, I truly believe that in your own poverty, in your own, in your own mourning, in your own struggling to be merciful, your own struggle to be a peacemaker, maybe the persecution, etc., that you experience, that we have a blessing already now, that we can rejoice even now uh, because Emmanuel, God is with us. We have access to the life of God alive and at work in us, and this promise of, of not only His presence and His goodness here and now, but the future and eternal fulfillment, the gift of eternal life. So my brothers and sisters, I pray that your Advent is blessed. I pray that your walk with Jesus is blessed, and I pray that we can drink ever more deeply from the fountain of grace and blessing, which is the life of God and His, His grace at work in us. I thank you so much for watching. Look forward to being with you again next week. Remember, we are pilgrims on the surface. So much peregrinos, poco a poco, little by little. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. God bless you.